What's up, everybody? And welcome back to All the Things Sword of Truth, the chapter by chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a feeding horn full of craft brew on the side. I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And this week we're going to be talking about chapter 20 of Wizards First Rule. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I say that slower every time. <laughs> <laughs> Just builds anticipation, you know. <laughs> Wizards first. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> that was too much. I know. <laughs> Kept you hanging on. Well, it is a new year, so happy 2020, everybody. Uh, cheers, JD. Cheers. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with us and giving us a little bit of a holiday break and also for sticking around with us over the last year. I'm super excited for what 2020 is going to bring. Yeah, me too. So far, 2020 has brought a little bit of news our way. A new book just dropped. Yeah, Witch's Oath came out today. And uh, I was at work and got the notification that your download has started and it made my fucking day. I started it immediately but I didn't get it finished. <laughs> and we have to do this episode tonight, so I didn't finish the book, even though it's only like five and a half hours on Audible, so I was sure I was going to get it done, and I, I didn't get there. <laughs> I'm going to catch up soon. You have to, because I can't hold it in. <laughs> well, we bought the hardcover, so that no matter what, whether I'm doing Audible or I'm reading like a physical book, I have no excuse to not keep reading at this point. <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> I want to report on my desk by Friday. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> I'm not super great at timelines. You'll get it, and you'll probably get it on Friday, but it's going to like be right there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all we really have in the way of news. We know that the store is still forthcoming. Pending. <laughs> I don't know if there was a just kidding post I missed. No, Rob Anderson has said it is coming. We just we all have to be patient. I think maybe they they may have jumped the gun on announcing it just a little bit or they thought that it would be open sooner than it is. I have no idea what's holding them up. It's probably something completely out of their control. I I would hope so. Or it yeah. could be. Yeah. I don't know at all. No, but what I yeah, do no, want to no, say no. is I want my sword. <laughs> That's all it's really about. Yeah. And I actually saw some other people saying the same thing. So it's I know it's not like you're the only person who's looking for this item. <laughs> <laughs> I will have it, Jade. I will. <laughs> I remember when he had a store that there was a couple items on there. It wasn't a lot. There was like a necklace and a couple different shirts. I'd buy them. Yeah. I, I don't know why I never ordered anything. I think it's because at that point I wasn't really savvy with online. I'm still not. Let's be real. I don't online shop. I usually leave it to you. I say these are the things I need and do it. <laughs> Please do this. I love <laughs> online shopping. It's weird to me. I don't know why. Um, Buying stuff with the option of pants is great. That's all. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Well, when this was open, it, I, it was like third party seller. It's weird. I don't know. I don't really trust. I didn't trust. I didn't trust the internet. So I was like, no. And hopefully they have some of this kind of stuff in the shop or better things. Because those shirts, I remember, were like, okay. I think they'd have a lot of fucking good material to go off now. Yeah. How long ago was that? How far along was the series when that store was up and running? I don't know. I feel like it. I feel like it wasn't that long ago, but I also feel like that about things that happened like seven years ago. <laughs> so, so who's to say? Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> but it's something to look forward to. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh yeah. But I think we can just trudge right into our synopsis. All right. Yeah. Uh, so this chapter, I can almost kind of picture it like a montage. We get a little bit of Richard and Kalen making their way through the Narrows, and we get a little bit more of Dark and Rawl, who is still with the <laughs> the buried Carl. <laughs> God damn it, Carl. Yeah, that that about sums it up, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chapter starts out with Richard and Kalen, you know, trudging carefully through the Narrows that they were basically forced into choosing. They say they decided at the same time, and it, I thought that was just a weird way to put that, too, because... They didn't really have a choice. It says that. They they were forced. Well, that's the only place they really had to go, though, right? 
Yeah. That... I mean, it's a pass. Yeah. That was the goal. It goes from one side of the boundary to the other side. So, of course, you're going that way. Yeah. It's the only way to go, I feel like. Yeah. And all the bad stuff was behind them. And it it was just weird. They were like, oh, yeah, they decided together they were going to go that way. And then also they were forced that way. And I don't know what else you were going to do anyways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Richard puts the nightstone in his pocket, though, at this point, because it's not really helping anybody. (laughs) He said it makes it hard to see. Isn't that the point of the nightstone, so you could see your way through the boundary? He said it was making it hard to see the, like, the green light? Yeah, the green from the boundary. I think the stone would light up, and it would change the color of the green, so you couldn't really gauge where that... Where the death line is. Yeah, it's like a yellow glow everywhere that's washing it out. I just thought Addy was like, here, take this, it's going to help you. He's in the shit now, and he pulls out the stone, he's like, this thing is a pain in the ass. And did it's it? It's not re- nearly as helpful as I thought it was going to be. Did it really help that much? I mean, they have the bones to keep them safe from the creatures that are running around in there. The stone is just literally to help them see their way through, I think. And they used it when they were going through the, like, the big rock thing, right? Yep. Which, again, was only one way through. <laughs> like, they didn't have, there was only one way to go. They just had to see. That's, I guess that's what my point was. There's only one way to go. It might be hard to see. And, I mean, too far to the right, death. Too far to the left, death. So you're going forward, man. And I kind of feel like this boundary isn't necessarily perfectly straight. Yeah, we talked about that. But you ha- you know you have to go that way. It's not a question of do I just turn around and start walking the other way now? You're going that way, so the stone is just to help you see, I felt like. It's a flashlight. A magic flashlight. I used to have a flashlight that you just shake, but uh, apparently if you drop it in water, it still doesn't work. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have one anymore. That's a bummer. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, wait. (laughs) Did you put it in water because you were like, oh, there's no battery or cord, so it's not electric? No, we were camping, and I was near the... You know Salmon Run? Yeah. You know the big hill that goes right into the river where Mm -hmm. you can camp right on top of the, the... Yeah, it fell down there into the water. Okay, okay. And so I couldn't, like, even get to it in time. That makes sense. But so, yeah, so now I don't have one. (laughs) I thought you were, like, making some jump of logic, and you were like, oh, okay, so manual electricity, that's... That's safe, then. I can chuck it in the water. It'll be fine. No, no, absolutely not. I just shake not. it out again. It was, it'll be fine. It was magic electricity. You could just shake the <laughs> flashlight, and it would. the batteries would be charged. Yeah. Yeah, but it fell in the water, and it's it's fucked. Well, so. well. It happens. <laughs> Richard tells Kaylin she just needs to go slow, and he tries to not think about the fact that they are treading in between you know, the boundary on either side. Yeah, it's literally a life and death situation. Let's just not try and think about this too hard, okay? Yeah. No, what? No. Pay the fuck attention, dude. Some shit's going on. I'm not, I'm just going to wing it. It'll be fine. I don't feel like that's the right attitude. <laughs> yeah, I think he just, he knows how dangerous it is, and I don't think he would ever do this in a normal, like, course of his life. And somehow he's fucking doing it. So he's like, all right, keep walking. <laughs> yeah. Well, it said years of being a guide was like no fucking help here. You just got to go forward with the path, whether that's over the trees or the rocks or whatever. Yeah, the path is the path. I think that's established. There's only one fucking way to go. So it's not like you're going to get lost necessarily unless you drift into the boundary. And it keeps creeping up on either side. Yeah, it gets closer and closer, and fuck that. (laughs) He's smiling at Kaylin to try and, like, reassure her, and she's smiling back, and it's obvious she's terrified. And she's been here before. Yeah. She's the experienced one, and I feel like she's 
acting more afraid than Richard. Well, I feel like she was even in a different, possibly worse situation because she didn't go through a pass, right? No, as far as we know, she just went through the boundary itself. Yeah, this bitch just walked through it with a wisp and was <laughs> like severely more dangerous than what they're doing right now. Yeah, we had mentioned that in a previous episode, people died to get her through the boundary and there was this past she didn't know about it. That's why once she found Richard, they had to figure out a way back through the boundary. She wasn't like, hey, it's just, it's right over there. <laughs> you can just walk. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go through it. It'll be fine. <laughs> he made a shitty boundary. He can just walk right through it. <laughs> so at this point in their little trek, Richard has started to feel the effects of the boundary get into him a little bit. It's the flashbacks from the mushrooms in the first and second chapters. <laughs> Never really leaves your body. Oh. Or maybe that's acid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently the will to live is leaving his body. Ooh. And he's... Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that. And he's losing all sense of time. They could have been in their hours or days. He's not really fucking sure. And he just kind of wants peace. He wants things to just, like, be better. And he's not really scared anymore because he's been so, like, tense for so long. He can't even bring himself to be really afraid. So he's starting to chill out, like, a lot. Yeah, but in, like, the I'm depressed and I don't want to live anymore type way that's heavy <laughs> yeah he doesn't have time to wallow for very long though because he sees the shadow thingies following them in the path but they're like green around them now <laughs> does that mean they are on the border of the boundary like coming in from the edges of where richard and Kaylin can't go something changed because now they're moving and they're green so I don't know if it's because it's nighttime or... I don't know. Something tripped him out. It was scarier. <laughs> <laughs> Richard and Kaylin stop, but the shadow things aren't stopping. So this freaks him out, and he tells Kaylin to lead the way, and he walks backwards behind her. They're like crab walking it. They're watching each other's backs. Yeah. yeah. That way you have eyes all the way around you, and you can't get snuck up on. That was smart as fuck. <laughs> and she goes as fast as she can, but again, she's not super great at walking across rocky traverse land either. So it's not going super fast. He's getting a little irritated, but eventually they come to a hill where he's walking backwards down it and he's debating pulling his sword out, but he doesn't want to do it too quick. Just like he didn't earlier... In the book, he's like super hesitant about pulling the shit out. I don't think I would be. Do you remember when he was in the swamp and he was dipping the tip of the sword in the water and mm -hmm. the snakes just took right the fuck off? How is this any different? Wouldn't you be like, oh, yeah, the sword. Obviously, I'm going to pull that out. Everybody else is going to fuck off because it's a badass sword. It is strange that his impulse there was to pull it out, but dip it down, like, pull it out, but dip it in the water, whereas here he can't even pull it out, because it's going to freak everything around him out. I would pull it out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> in a heartbeat. I would also probably cut myself on it <laughs> and <laughs> get an infection five minutes into the story. But... No, you don't want to give anything in there the scent of blood. I absolutely do not cut yourself under any circumstances. We will get to that <laughs> at a later date while yeah. reading this book. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, but he kind of, in the end, Richard realizes that, look, if they do swarm me, it's going to be the sword. Yeah. We're going to end up using it if we have to. If we don't have to, we are not going to. Um, which is weird that he has some sort of insight. It doesn't really let the reader in on why that might be. Yeah, why he, th why he thinks that it's going to freak them all out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I 